morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever and whenever you are tuning in today's podcast. Um, I am joined by long-term industry friend, Simon Burton. Now, Simon wears many hats in the industry um, and has a very long and prestigious career in the events industry. But today, I'm here to talk to him about um, a more recent launch, which is the Virtual Events Institute. And for his role in that, Simon heads up um, the directorship and he's a co-founder of the organization so simon welcome to the podcast well th um, thank you adam and thank you for that um very flattering introduction i'm not, i wear many hats it's true but mostly just to cover up the lack of hair like. <laughs> i i'm surprised i've not had you on the podcast before mate it's uh, it's probably long overdue right you have, but long ago. Long Probably many, many, ago. many years ago, actually. Uh, I think with Kevin Jackson and Jason Allen Scott, um, I'm, I reckon maybe 10 years ago. I reckon, yeah, do you know what, now, now I remember, and do you know what, it was, it was James on our team that probably interviewed you back at, at that point in London, I do remember now, I'm, I'm sure I've got, I've, I'm, in fact, do you know what, Jason will have a, a picture of that knocking around somewhere. <laughs> and, and actually, I suspect we're going to talk about many of the recurring themes, because, yeah. uh, prestigious or otherwise, my, my career, I think, in events has been about those recurring themes, and why I think they're important, and and why particularly now, uh, at this moment in time, this moment of paradigmatic shift, those ideas are perhaps more important than ever before. Yeah, so we're here to talk about the Virtual Events Institute, but let's be very clear, you are an evangelist for the events industry, right? Face-to-face -face events, meetings, conferences, exhibitions, whatever format they take, you have been right there as part of the industry pushing the importance of that forward, right? So this is not to detract from face-to-face -face events are dead and virtual events are, are, are the, the future. No, thank you for raising that, Adam. My, my career, if it's marked by anything, has been by an absolute evangelical zeal to show that of all the marketing media, face-to-face, -face, live events are the most important. And I've presented numerous times around the world about the idea of un unlocking the awesome power of live events. So, so nothing we're going to discuss today and nothing uh, that's happening in the current circumstances diminishes the power of live events. But, and it's a significant but, my principle has always been that the moment of the event, the moment of coming together was just one step on a journey. And you ignored the other components of that journey at your peril. And I think that becomes truer now than ever before. Yeah. The, 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 the moment the event happens is just the pinnacle. It's just the moment of coalescence. And those principles of how you market, how you attract, how you build communities, which are important for, let's call them physical events, are as important for an event which has a digital component. They're just the same. They're just the same. It's just, it's just the balance is the balance is modified. I, I, I couldn't have put it better myself, mate. It's such an eloquent way that you put it because for me, as somebody who came into the events industry without organizing any events, I, actually from, from more of a digital-led, you know, way of delivering news and information and engaging the community online, um, you know, digitization and the use of online systems and processes and the way of delivering always made sense to me it seemed that there was just this resistance or maybe a lack of investment or interest around exploring those avenues on the whole on the wider industry maybe that's because face-to-face -face events were just so successful both as a format and revenue and all that kind of stuff what do you think well i think the one of the challenges was that for a certain type for a certain type of physical event some of those bells and whistles looked like nothing but bells and whistles yeah, and I, I think we probably met on Twitter, as I did many of my yeah. current colleagues. And I, I used to say at the time, it seems such a silly thing to say now, but we were the real social media. Events were the re real social media, or something else. that kind of <laughs> coined this brilliant term to describe what we, what we did, the way we convened people um, around ideas. And none of that's changed. What's changed is that. A, 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 a moment in time has happened which has forced us to reassess what those events look like and how they perform. 
And, and I think for those people who see any kind of virtualization as competitive to real events, they're missing the they're missing the real opportunity here. And, and I think long time we won't bandy words like virtual and physical and hybrid around. Every event will be hybrid, and we'll just innately understand that an event without those digital components doesn't really exist. I think when you, I agree with you, and I think when you look at the opportunities that are presented now for our industry by harnessing and unleashing the power of virtual online events, and I think the, those two words need some clearer definition as, as well around them because it can mean so many different things to people already, that why would we as an industry which ultimately underpins every single sector and every single industry in the world and also wants to touch as many people with our message and our community shy away from the, the, the technology or the power of the format that allows us to do that on a bigger scale? right it's it's yes there's always the argument that there is an attrition of a physical audience and you know you might get people going preferring to go online rather than coming to the face-to-face -face event but how many of you used digital marketing as a way to fill our audience anyway so like this to me just adds so many layers of benefit on top of, of what we're already doing uh, that to not have hybrid going forward just would seem crazy I think there's a really interesting dichotomy in what you say because, of course, on the one hand, we are all going to discover new opportunities and new formats. And, and hybrid might well apply to the way the market works or the mm -hmm. event concept. Uh, but, but, but the other component that I think is really being missed here is that we're being forced to reassess what the value of those events was. Not to question their value because they innately had that but, but how that manifests itself and so let me give you an example charity film awards which is another of my hats we were one of the first events that because of circumstances pivoted to virtual and what we discovered was there was a whole other audience we grew our audience we went from 350 people at a physical event to 350 core people at a digital event and another 10,000 people who were able to engage in a way that we'd never given them the opportunity to engage previously. Yeah. And when it comes to recreating that event in the, in the next phase of our journey, where there is a, a genuine hybrid opportunity, we will incorporate every single one of our learnings from the digital into the physical. We will not, we will not neglect that audience again, because growing the audience in the way we did, who wanted something different from us was a, a key learning. Ah, do you know what? I was right there, mate. I was watching your your stream through Facebook, having you know, having known of the charity film awards, been fully aware and, and actually promoted and supported the news of of the program on event industry news. I'd never actually been to the awards myself. You know, we live in the, the events industry, so I can't go to everything. I, I, my wife would hate me for that, but. For me, it was the first time I really understood the messaging and the reason that the Charity Film Awards was there. So it touched me as somebody who'd been aware of it from a distance, but never actually had the opportunity to engage with the, the message. And I think, you know, to your point, like 10,000 people now know about the work that goes into the Charity Film Awards and why it's there and why the shortlist is there and why the winners are there and why it's so important for that sector. Um, so just, just on that basis, Basis, right it's 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 a must in in most people's industry right and, and there were some really important learnings yeah, we were we were in some ways a guinea pig i think uh, there were maybe the, the bafta gaming awards that happened the week before us there were a couple yeah. of other events but we were learning we were learning on the fly and so many of those learnings are i'm seeing now manifest themselves in the kind of content for the virtual uh, for the virtual events institute courses because it's easy to say well th look, these courses titles are the same they're about planning they're about sales they're about delivery they're about speaker management and until you've had to create an event that you used to run in one of london's prestigious venues in your front room you have simply no idea of how the dial shifts on what is or isn't important. And that requires us to unlearn and relearn a whole new set of skills. If we as an industry, the wider events industry, are to flourish in the new world order, we are going to have to apply our old skill sets to new circumstances and rebalance those skill sets. 
And so the virtual events institute is all about that principle how do we how do we help people do what they did innately and brilliantly historically quickly in the in the new world and do that combined with the physical events that undoubtedly we are all still going to deliver yeah so what i'm taking from that simon is that the idea from the vir for the virtual events institute came through your own experience of having to go out there and go through the pain of relearning unlearning innovating upskilling and and just you know under so much pressure obviously because you're on a tight deadline to to get the the awards up and running i guess the virtual events institute if that had been there for you at that moment in time the process would have been somewhat a little slicker a little smoother in terms of getting access to that information and that that knowledge well, right right exactly so so my personal experience was one of the was one of the components also uh, one of the other co-founders michael barnett from ingo yep. ingo very quickly ran some event virtualization summits and what we were seeing there was event technology coming to life. Really, you know, so much event tech has really flourished at this moment, not just the platforms, but yeah, other yeah. pieces of tech. And 6,000 people signing up, like, like that. And that speaks of a market which has huge appetite to learn. Yeah. And, and I think that's another, that's another really important principle here, which you've always embodied in event industry news but the virtual events institute also embodies which is this idea that if you talk to 27 different people about what an event is you'll get 27 different definitions like over here you might have major sports and major entertainment events and over here you've got in-house training events and then you've got trade shows and then you've got training and then you've got corporate events and then you've got experiential and we all strut around like we know what all of these silos are because hey i work in events yeah and one of the really interesting things that's happened and that we at the institute hope to reflect is this breaking down of those silos so i think you're not just seeing new formats emerge because of necessity i think you're seeing new formats emerge because of opportunity i've been able to rethink about how i run my event what my audiences want and how i deliver it to those different audiences in different ways so it's really important for us that we're not siloed we're not just about one bit of the industry if you look at our incredible advisory panel they represent all sorts of different interest groups whether that's eric lee one of the co-founders of linkedin or our representatives from google or from microsoft or from the trade show industry or the corporate events industry or just brand or human resources if we, if we seize this opportunity to to really deconstruct what an event is and then put it back together based on the fact that tech is going to play a bigger part whatever that event looks like and wherever it takes place we have a real opportunity what we mustn't do is just say woe is me we can't run an event again for however long yeah waiting for physical to return and the good old days i think that's just way past you know talk to me three months ago there might have been an opportunity on oh, my mind might have been slightly different that things could go back to the way that they were but i think we're, we're far past that now if you were in that mind frame that okay i can i'm, I'm going to be able to plan my physical event in in q4 right towards the end of the year all of a sudden the government have taken that option out of your hands so you are now left with no option but to look to 2021 but if you'd have decided to go right we are going to embrace digital hybrid virtual there's still that opportunity to deliver value through that this year it's just not as a physical event right right and we all want physical events to come back as quickly as possible as safely as possible because they are the drivers of the economy but we also need to make sure when we emerge from this experience it's like it's like we as an industry are still under lockdown and we should, under lockdown we should not be putting on weight and binge watching netflix we should be <laughs> exercising eating healthily learning a foreign language and brushing up on our ukulele skills and that's that that is a great metaphor for what the virtual events institute is about it is about us emerging from this experience as an events industry as a total events industry fitter stronger leaner cleverer more rounded more aware of opportunities 
so that at whatever moment physical events come back, they come back with every aspect of technology and digitization that the world is increasingly going to see hardwired into them, not, okay. as, a, not as an afterthought. I couldn't agree more then. And I guess that brings me on to how is the Virtual Events Institute going to help those in the industry that want to move forward, that want to upskill, that want to get better, be in a better position both personally, financially, long-term career-wise? Like, what do the courses, what are the subject matters that you're going to touch upon initially with the Virtual Events Institute and how are they going to help people? Well, that's a great question because many of the many of the courses and the content look like the things you might have learned on a traditional uh, event management course. We're going to talk about planning. We're going to talk about audience engagement, and there's the first clue: audience engagement in a physical seminar theatre or in a conference hall is fundamentally different from that where where screens involved. Yep. We're going to talk about, therefore, how you engage the audience, how you develop content that suits those audiences, and how you market to them in new and interesting ways. So that's the, that's the first area where we've got an existing skill set, but it needs to be retooled for, for, this, for this new environment. We're going to talk about monetization, which is clearly the biggest challenge for people who've had a, a legacy format or a legacy business model and are going to need to adapt that. We'll talk about how you build your tech stack, what partners you should use, how you measure, how you track data. One of the great joys of being an institute is it's not just one speaker. We've yeah. already got nine subject matter experts. I think actually we've gone up to 12 this morning already who are going to contribute in various ways, demonstrating their expertise and allowing the, the people at, uh, who are going through the certification to experience that. And there'll be different voices from different parts of the industry and from different countries because, of course, what's happened here is we've become incredibly global again. Absolutely. Become incredibly global again. And therefore, that ability to learn and share best practice globally is another important strand of what the Institute's about. And once that, Simon, once people have gone through these, this initial course layout, how is the how is the institute going to develop long term to continually support is it going to be a refinement of the courses um, a reassessment how, how do people keep on top of things but so some of this is there's, there's some devil in the detail here but broadly you will complete a set number of courses to be certified that's mm -hmm. a, um, unusual for brits like me and you adam but that's a pretty standard accepted practice in the us for how you would build a certification yeah we will add more courses as uh, 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 as we build and you will then pick the courses that best suit you so you might you, know, you might you might pick any 10 of at that point 15 or 20 courses you'll become a certified virtual events professional and then every year you will resubscribe at a smaller level to do top-up courses for your cpd points or cem as i think they're called in the in the us so you'll keep that certification by re-engaging and then we'll build a community and we'll be able to use that community to launch research to launch case studies to build an awards program Grab, everything that, that that collective of people needs to understand what they're doing and how to do it more effectively. It sounds like a really good overriding vision of, of bringing the whole industry together stronger on the subject matter of virtual and hybrid events, which has been something that we've touched upon in, in the past at Event Tech Live and obviously in Event Industry News, but I've not seen one organization really focus down on, on that aspect of it. And for me, one of the core drivers of always delivering Event Tech Live has been that training, that understanding, that knowledge share, because the, the industry is built on skill and knowledge, isn't it? No matter whether it's AV, the crew that come in to build your physical space, the stand builders, the branding companies, our industry is built on knowledge and, and understanding. And this, to me, this is one of the areas that has been massively undersupported, underdeveloped. And it's great to see an organization like you with so many really interesting specialists within their field coming together to, to really provide a platform for the move the industry forward, man. Yes, it, it, thank you, thank you. And it's important to note that the two other co-founders, R.D. Whitney, uh, one of the other co-founders, has a history in building certification platforms. So he 
he understands the discipline required. He understands the, the kind of knowledge we need to impart, the tools we need to impart it. And let me stress, this is not just a trainer talking at you for an hour. This is someone, this, these are modules which are based around learning outcomes where you will have to go through and answer questions and think about how the the knowledge that you're being imparted with impacts on your job and your practical outcomes uh, so so it's, it's thought through as a, a a coherent learning program and the, the final co-founder who and our ceo sophie ahmed has a background in former and essential you know running major scale events launching major events but also running those training divisions so we've got a really interesting blend of people and backgrounds and we've got a you know a north american component component, uh, a European component, and then you supplement that with our advisors, and I urge anyone who really wants to understand what our vision is to look at our advisors, because our advisors are not people who are simply there because they want the halo effect. Mm. They are there because they want to tell us what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong and where we can improve, because they are deeply committed to the industry. Uh, deeply committed to events and wants to see best practice promulgated and I think that's that's sort of what we're talking about how do we take evolutionary best practice that we've all learned from running our normal events our traditional events for uh, you know however long we've been in the industry plus the time of the received wisdom how do we transport that really quickly into that level of knowledge for an industry, for hundreds of thousands of event professionals around the world, how do we give them the tools to continue to do their jobs effectively in this changed world? Let me ask you this then, Simon. How do you think the world will look? Do you think there'll be new job roles, new specialisms, new, you know, we, we look when we look at the wider tech world, you know, there are so many specific roles within delivering any type of technology you know even let's take cisco for example you know one of the biggest network providers in the world train and certify you know companies engineers individuals within certain aspects of it can you see or do you see a future where the events industry is somewhat similar i guess we have specialist av companies specialist technicians do you think the virtual events world will create careers like that? Yeah, I think we're uh, and sort of difficult to predict. We're what? Yeah, I know many of us have been talking about many of these principles for some time, but in terms of that paradigmatic shift, that, that absolute, it's like, the, it's, like the, you know, it's like the Heidelberg moment. It's like the invention of the printing press here. Something yeah. big, something big has happened. So uh, I, I can give you some views, but you know, talk to me in a year and I'll be wrong. You know, for <laughs> one, one, other, I'll get wrong. That's, that's why we're trying to coalesce as many advisors and as many different training voices so that we were able to evolve. I think you'll see some job roles which are very similar and transfer easily, yep. but the balance of what that job role involves will shift. I think you'll see with the turn, return of traditional physical events, you'll see some of those job roles needing new skills. And I think you'll see the emergence of a bunch of new skills around pinch points, areas where what was acceptable in most traditional event formats is not, just doesn't cut the mustard when we go live. I think so, particularly around community building, audience engagement, content, speaker management, ROI. I mean, these are all, I'm reading you a list of our modules, but, yep. but, I think, but I think they're the important ones. These are areas that I think much, much. So if you think I'm talking to you, I'm almost certainly not because you're brilliant at your job in the event industry, but much of our industry has sort of paid lip service to these things. Yeah. And yeah. I just think they, they are harder to get away with when, when they're digitized. They're just harder. They're, they're, they're harder to on the hoof. They're harder for instinct to kick in. There's, there's a degree more discipline, and that's the kind of discipline, to take your example, that those tech companies have in development and marketing and, uh, and their dev teams and their thought processes and their roadmaps. I think you're going to see events becoming more like that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think if I was to look at my own experience, you know, and this is one of the wonderful things about face to face events is that ultimately you what somebody thinks about an event 
is how they go away from the event feeling, right? So, you know, it, it's very individual, it's very personal, and, and two people who've walked around the event in a similar way can have two very different experiences. But on the whole, we have created a world where we're very good at crafting and making sure people walk away with a good experience. That's that's our jobs, right? To keep people safe, but to work, walk away feeling elated, inspired, they've had good meetings, they've done business, they've had good conversations, whatever that might be, even if it's just to come together with some industry folk and have a beer, right? Like we are, there is no industry better at it than us, the, the, the bringing people together and getting them to feel good. But when it comes to the analytical side, and I've seen it with technology come into the exhibition market to around, you know, not the old lead chat capture, more of the analytical tracking, the ROI statistics, the backing up of everything we do as a, as a physical event world. Um, now, with digital, we can present even more of that um, information and data to back up the, the efforts that we do. And I don't know whether you agree on this, but it, it, it seems to me like part of the lack of... I guess recognition of our industry of late, very, very recently on the impact that we have, would have been much, we would have been in a much better position if we'd have got more of that information and data to back up the impact that we have on business. I think it's really interesting. So there's a, there's a number of strands there, aren't there? The first of all is that because we've been siloed, we've created lots of little gangs for ourselves, lots of little lots of little gangs and ghettos whether national or specific event type focus and we've come to realize that those aren't helpful we need to yeah. join forces we need to break those barriers down we are all in this together and that's happened and i i think uh, i think the the event industry media and trade associations have performed exceptionally well in this time of duress like like hats off to them one of one of my many hats off to them just think they've all been uh, all been spectacular at trying to coalesce and we've got to do more of that but i think you also talk about another idea and it's starting to happen a couple of years ago and i always felt a degree of discomfort with it it was this it was this idea that we should take the serendipity out of events and i was mm. uncomfortable because i always felt that the serendipity <laughs> was, was kind of the best bit it, it was that it, it was that moment where, where chance transcended the event and i think that's one of the things that the new the, our new tools and our new measurement struggle most to represent how do you how do you get that moment of serendipity and yeah. we'll come up with ways but how do you create the brilliant beer at the bar how do you create the snatched moment of hearing something in a seminar theater that makes you go in how do you uh, how do you recreate the bumping into an old colleague who suddenly gives you a great bit of information how do you recreate trust yeah, these yeah. are all big, big questions that mean real events aren't going to go away. They're never going to go away. Uh, but we, but we can, but we can learn how to mimic lots of the other bits and take that learning, those digital learnings, those technology learnings, back into the real world. We're going to see. Um, if I have to make a prediction, it's in two years' time. Every current existing traditional event format is going to come hardwired in its DNA with elements of technology and digitization that never conceived of happening. And every digital event is going to be predicated on how do we actually create serendipity? Yeah. How, do, how do we create that moment of human interaction? And, you know, I want the Virtual Events Institute to be at the vanguard of develop, developing that thinking. I think the way that, and I agree with so many points you've made there, but the way that I would, and we mentioned it very much early on, so I'm jumping around here, that there seems to be, at the moment, this very much, it's, it's virtual or physical. There, there doesn't seem to be, like, on the whole, this effort of, like, moving towards a, a blended future and, and the benefits of both. I, you know, maybe it's just because we're in a really tough time as an industry at the moment and people so desperately want to get back to that physical world and I, I totally appreciate that I'm, I'm in that boat myself but let's t let's look at Amazon right so 
the serendipity of walking into a um not that it's my idea of, of fun but walking into you know a retail store around a brand that you know coming across that perfect jumper or those perfect jeans or shoes that's what retail relies on but amazon no doubtly is an example of how technology can create an environment where people just get what they want when they didn't realize they need it because of the way that technology works and the way that Amazon presents itself. But let's also look at that in the sense that Amazon have now moved back into the retail world with physical stores around food and beverage because they know that there's still that inherent value there of bringing, you know, people walking down an aisle and picking stuff up just because they pass it and it caught its, caught its eye. So for me, both can work extremely well. Will online be able to create that serendipity of the bar and the aisle and the walking past the colleague? Probably not, but I tell you what, for me it can do, it can, it can give people a reason to come to those physical events because they're invested in it, they're part of the community. That's the way I, I, I see it. There's, there's, there's another point I'd make, which is it's not just in, in those examples you gave, serendipity. It's also, what does it feel like? What's the material? Mm. What does it taste? Is this great coffee? Is it bad coffee? I love those shoes. Ah, they don't quite fit me. I didn't, the color's not quite the same as it is on the screen. All of these things will, that blended is a brilliant word, much, much, in some ways much better than hybrid, we'll find blended solutions and, and we will find market specific solutions. Absolutely. So the solution for you is not going to be the same as the solution for me. RD, the, uh, the, 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 the guy who's uh, set up our certification businesses and leading, is leading some of our thinking around certification, he says that the, this moment is like the US gold rush. Mm. And there are loads of people out there and they're prospecting and finding new opportunities and developing new things. And it's a brilliant metaphor. And our job is to be Levi's. Our job is to be the thing that clothes them, the solid, dependable, reliable thing that clothes them to make sure when they're out there prospecting for this new opportunity, they're well equipped. I, I that's, a, that's a brilliant analogy for what the Institute's all about. I agree with you. And I think institutes like yours will be the avenue which we attract talent from other sectors. So for me, one of the biggest opportunities of bringing talent into our industry, creating a bigger events industry, more diverse events industry, is let's look at digital marketing. Like what are digital marketers really good at? They're really good at leveraging software and technology to reach an audience. And let's be honest about it. I think the definition of event organizers, I fell into it. That's like how much mo most of us come around to organize an event. We just have a passion for people and we kind well, of go, we, we can, exactly. <laughs> That's what I admit. I just fell into it. I didn't plan on doing it. Um, but actually through virtual events as a mechanism for marketing and community engagement and support and, and market share and thought leadership and all that kind of stuff, all of a sudden, digital marketers, come, for me, could come through the Virtual Events Institute, learn about how to put events together, the formats, how to engage people, and then boom, all of a sudden, an explosion of online events, virtual events, which ultimately will probably turn into physical events because they'll want to bring that community together at some point. Right, and that That's community why. will want that community will want to meet. I, I think you're right. Th th those, those are key learnings. The other learning that, from a personal perspective, that struck me, and where I think we will co-opt and acquire learning and talent is film and tv mm -hmm. i think I, I think the event industry because of it you know, because sport and entertainment and theater are part of our wider event industry thought of itself about this uh, as a stage and this presentation and one of the biggest learnings i've personally taken is that uh, is it's about screen and that rents a challenge because we're all used to screens now delivering us the highest quality content on demand whenever we want it you want you know if you watch game of thrones on your any device you, that you just expect that's the that's the benchmark for content yeah yeah so a bumbling conference speaker who doesn't really know his or her stuff who hasn't prepared who talks 20 minutes longer than they're supposed to who doesn't, doesn't interact with the audience this is no this, this used to be acceptable to some people this is no longer acceptable because i just pressed the off button yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. that yeah. that that big shift that's why so many of our uh, early modules are about audience engagement and content and building community and keeping the audience keeping the audience attention because those production values have just shifted and and, and i suspect that we're going to see that requirement become higher 
when we go back into the real world Th those skills that skill of uh, clearly there are loads of people in our industry who are already very very good at it i'm not trying to tar everybody with this sure, 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 sure. but but there, but there was a lot of stuff that was that, that passed muster because the serendipity was good enough yeah and i think and, and, now, that's one, now that ain't good enough that's one of the things that i guess it's just part of the process of of moving forward isn't it you know if i look back at some of our events in the first years and compared to what we deliver now it, it's it, it almost makes my skin crawl and that's not because it wasn't good back then it's because we've learned so much about how to improve that and i guess that's one of the things that i feel on the whole some of the individuals in our industry that are kind of anti-virtual online because they say they don't work they're, they're rubbish they're bad experiences has to appreciate that our industry is going through a bit of a transformation period and a huge learning period and to be honest with you until virtual events institute there wasn't actually really any framework or, or place that people could go to learn how to improve they were kind of learning on the fly or through experience or through failure or trying to watch what other people were doing so virtual events and i totally agree with you the production the production level and the quality will go up exponentially over the next decade uh, and i think they'll be immiscible of what like film and tv is the the, the quality of them will be that good um and, and that's not to say that you have to have a huge budget invested to, to achieve that because i think the industry the suppliers the the tech companies the av companies the venues will all find ways to support that at different levels of budget that, that's my opinion. Our industry is full of talented, creative, inventive, charismatic people who are brilliant problem solvers. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant problem solvers. And we're seeing brilliant examples of those problems being solved on a daily basis around the world. What we're trying to do is to help that transformation of that learning and fast track it and, and to give it a bit of structure. So, so, so that you know, and there, are, there are lots of good resources out there. We're just, we're just trying to be uh, a solid center that that allows. And people can say, oh, that training module wasn't good, or that presenter wasn't right. Then we'll change them. You know, this is we're all, we're all evolving, but we are all evolving against a world where technology is going to increase in the impact on an event wherever and whenever it takes place. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe our contention is better to learn and be part of that, that journey than not. I have no doubt, though, there are going to be some people who are going to continue to run spectacular events that don't do many of these things because their ability to leave each serendipity or touch excels. But I also think there are going to be an enormous number of new opportunities, new event formats, new, new areas of content, ways of slicing and dicing markets that just didn't look possible previously that now open up. This is a, this for all its pain and for all the personal pain that many people in our industry are going through right now. This is, uh, this, is a, this is an imago moment. This is a moment where we might well transform into a butterfly and uh, and a thing of great beauty or perhaps many things of great beauty maybe yeah, the future is difficult to predict i agree with you mate and i, I, I would, the the time frame that came to my head was a decade but i think it'll be shorter than that i think we'll look back on this podcast and be like we said it there this is what happened this was as as much pain as the industry is going through right now at this moment physical events will return and once we add these layers of opportunity and and other ideas around serendipity and stuff on top of it we will be a much stronger buoyant healthier uh, better valued sector than i think ever ever before since the first exhibition kind of took yeah right, and i think it's really interesting i think there are some things we've we've historically tried some pieces of technology or ideas we've tried to put into certain event formats that we will now say that just doesn't work we just mm. need that we just need the human touch you know what a post-it note is as good as any bit of tech and there'll be other things where we say, well, we just never thought that would work. But isn't that brilliant for this market in this format? Tech, tech, should be like every, tech should be like every other event objective. Is like, why 
is it there? What 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 are we using it for? And I think the industry went, especially in my career over the last decade, at first it was very, let's just use tech for the sake of using tech. It was cool to have an app. It was cool to have something, some facial recognition. It was cool to have that. But as we've matured a little bit around technology, I think more the definition of why are we investing in this? What is the ultimate outcome? And, and virtual events, I think, will go through the same period. At the moment, they are a must, a necessity to continue people bringing people together but then it'll be like what format are we using what technology we're we using I guess that brings me on to one of my final questions for you Simon I think it'd be really interesting from both your your own experience of going through delivering the charity film awards but now working with VEI to deliver training what's on the top of your wish list when it comes to virtual events and that doesn't have to necessarily be platform it doesn't have to necessarily be technology but what would you like to see come that helps the industry do better it might be a bit blue sky thinking crystal ball scenario so i'll put you on the spot mate but is there anything that jumps to mind yeah i think it's a blue sky idea but i think better understanding of our terminology and nomenclature more yep. systemized and, and i don't mean virtual hybrid traditional <laughs> i mean all the aspects of our nomenclature and understanding what we think a different event format is supposed to deliver i think that that tying of those words into objective w would be so helpful for us as an industry because i think all too often we go oh, i'm going to a wedding well what you know what's we, we kind of is that celebration? Is it legal? Is it familial? What are, what are the outcomes? Yeah. The is the outcome Uncle Arthur telling the dirty joke, or is it two people meeting and forming a friendship? I just think uh, I use that as a glib example, but I just think we're not great on our terminology, and it makes it. Re I think that's one of the reasons why it's been really difficult historically for corporate event managers to talk to trade show marketers, to talk to <laughs> event producers, to talk to the not-for-profit sector, to sort of because we were all running around shouting different words or shouting the same set of words, but we meant different things by them. And I, I, and I think if we could start to carry less some real, real agreement about language internationally as well, we'd, it would be just wonderful. I totally agree with you, mate. I think, you know, just event technology means so much now. What is a virtual event? Is it three people? I mean, let's be honest about it. Every type of event could be a virtual hybrid event. And then at what point is it not virtual and is it hybrid? Isn't it hybrid and not virtual? It's like there's so much, I guess, um, misunderstanding around all the terminology because we like you said we're using it all in different ways aren't we to try and explain what we're doing to different people we're already saying for virtual please understand hybrid we're, this is not anti really events this is this is complimentary this yes is, yep. this is this is enhancement Okay, it's enhancing at a moment of pain, but it, but long term, this is enhancement. It's so difficult. It's yeah, because because we all. Well, I, I yeah, my slogan is not I, that I fell in. It's like I fell in and I fell in love, and, yeah. and and just that power of events to bring a community together, and to allow that community to express itself and be bigger than the sum of its parts. No other marketing platform can do that and the reason is because events need all the other marketing platforms to exist you Absolutely. can't have an event without all the other marketing platforms and this is just a really speeded up moment where that digital addition to events happens in a in, in a much much quicker way but we are going to come out like supercharged this is our this is our iron man 3 moment this is where we kind of yeah we, we can't remember what happened in iron man 3 be honest with you i can't remember what happened there but i i, I remember iron man 1 but not 3 i'll have to rewatch well, he's, 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 got, he's got a whole he's got a whole suite of suits and he works out which one's best and that's he's, true yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and humanity is at the heart of his technological empowerment there you go so simon burton the tony stark of the events industry <laughs> Um, mate, I think it's very important to, to for those that are listening or watching today, the, the courses for the Virtual Events Institute, for those that want to get ahead 
get a kickstart, right? Get 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 in front of maybe the competition or their peers, or or make sure that they're leading from the front. These courses are already out there for people to sign up for. I saw on social media someone had already done module one, I think, um, completed. Module, yeah, module module one's done. Many people have done that. We've got great feedback about it. Module two is due to drop any time now, uh, and I think modules three through through five are in production. Um, we're going really fast yep. um, and we're looking for more trainers, more insight, as well as clearly people who want to go through the learning experience, more people to join our focus groups. Uh, we're building a community. So for anybody listening or watching today, where's the best place to check all of that out or get in touch if they want to be a speaker, part of the community, part of the, the, the board? Virtualeventsinstitute.com awesome mate and where can they connect up with you as an individual uh well linkedin simon yep. burton and twitter simon burton so that's really you, the <laughs> fact that you got your name mate. That's, <laughs> <laughs> wow you you were just straight on twitter weren't you mate <laughs> um, and, and and you must know i followed I followed all 37 people who are also called Simon Burton. As a, oh, really? <laughs> I, I've, I followed all the same, but I uh, used this bit of information, but apparently it's against Twitter's terms and conditions to try and acquire a Twitter handle. Did you know that? Like, they will ban you. They will ban from, you. From, from buying a handle. From trying to get hold of a handle, yeah. So Simon Burton's probably worth a lot, mate, so, but maybe you, maybe you can find a way. <laughs> Simon, thank you very much for coming on today, mate. I'm, I can already see a part two in another six or so months coming when you've delivered more training, there's been more learning, there's been more people th go through the Virtual Events Institute courses, um, and obviously hopefully physical events are also back up and running. Um, so we'll definitely do a part two, but thank you very much for coming on today, mate, giving your, your opinion and what the Virtual Events Institute is there to do, um, and we'll get you back again in the next one. Thanks for having me, Adam, great to chat. Cheers, mate. Cheers.